Hello, welcome to Deanna's Bench. I'm Deanna. This is where I will take all of the craft I have collected over the years and actually do them. If you're a craft hoarder like I am, then join me. Post out that stash and let's get crafting. So today's craft, we we'll start kind of small. Is you have the, you probably have these in your home. They get tossed in the gift baskets. They cost a few bucks at Michael's. Um, I believe this is what happens to the socks that get lost in your laundry. You end up with these little kits. And today I'm going to do the Bug Hotel. Because why not? <laughs> Let me put these away. Because I just had them out to show that I have a lot of them. Actually, there's probably not even all of them. Uh, a lot of them are still packed away. Because I have crafts all the way back to the 70s. If you want to be really picky about it, I, all the way to the 60s because my husband's creature maker, thing maker is in here somewhere and if you don't think I'm going to make things, you're out of your mind. I, I totally have to do that. Okay, these are micro pack enhanced PE sheets. It's recyclable. I have no idea why it's in here. Now, here we start. This is not a brush. This is an insult. I'm not even, you could probably use it to make speckles. But who knows, right? They don't work very well. So I am going to prove how much of a Ruth Goodman fan I am. And if you've never heard of Ruth Goodman and you're a crafter, well, you're welcome. Go and look her up because this woman is the crafting queen. And she does crafts from back when it was, it was life or death to know your crafts. You had to know how to sew, you had to know how to bake, you had to know how to do these things or you wouldn't make it. So these were important things. But so I was watching her uh, doing a really big craft project in France. They're making a 13th century castle using 13th century technology, the world's biggest crafting project. So, to make a paintbrush, she went out and shaved a badger. I'm going to say that again. She shaved a badger, a roadkill badger. You can't do that in the United States because badgers in the United States are pretty much crack zombies. They are made out of chainsaws and hate. So even when you're dead, don't go near them. But the European badgers, they look like they're going to invite you in for tea. Unless, of course, they have been squashed. So first off, so we have the hair. We have to get the hit. We have to get the fur. That means I have to go get my cat. So I have a fluffy cat. So this is my cat. She's very fluffy. She's also very old. And she thinks she's going to get a goodie. So yeah, I'm going to give her a goodie. Do you want to say hello? No? 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 There. There. Have some goodies. And, of course, <sighs> no, I can't do it. I'll use my own hair. <laughs> you got your cookies, Nikki. Because uh, the rest of my cats would not stand, would not stand for this at all. Okay, here you go. 
since I am too much of a pussy to snip my cat's hair, I will snip my hair. Okay. Boop. And I have a lot of friends that will, that will they, they think I'm insane because a lot of times I'll have a, a knot in my hair and I'll just clip it out. Mostly because it's like if it's getting that knotted up, it's already weak. So just let it go. And let's see. There we go. Let's get this. She didn't actually use wire. And I'm not using the wire very well either. Let's try that again. <sighs> perfectly the first time. Okay, so, all right, so, go ahead and get my hair back. I'm going to have to trim that up. Get a piece of wire. I don't think she, I don't remember if she used a piece of wire. I don't think so, but um, it's handy. I actually just use glue. There goes half of it. Alrighty. I need to remember to hold it out here where it's visible. Okay. Basically just keeping it in one lump, a uh, clump. And I'll put a little glue up here. Leave that now. You're a crafter, you have feathers. I own chickens and geese, I have feathers everywhere. So, we clip there, we clip there, we take out the center thing, I don't know what it is, and you have a for rule. And I have learned that, that uh, this stuff is hot, so I'm going to be careful with it. Let's get this. end. Dip it in some water. Trim it a bit. As you can see, I really did not learn anything about cutting hair during the pandemic. Uh, well, so I can cut hair, I'm just not very good at it. People don't come up to me and say, oh my god, you cut hair so beautifully. No, I don't. Okay. Here we go. Now we take the stick and stick the stick into the thing. Where's my... Oops. I'm grabbing everything but my little cutty thing. Zacto blade. You will, you will learn that I use all kinds of very technical terms when I am doing my crafts. <laughs> and they're dumb. <laughs> okay. I probably don't have to tell you to cut away from yourself and uh, don't cut yourself. It would probably be actually better to use your Dremel if you have one. I have one. I don't have it plugged in. So now I will take my glue gun again. Glue gun. And voila. Ow. Did it again. Okay. I am dumb. All right. And now you, of course, have a lovely, well, I wouldn't call it lovely, do you have a really nice um, human hair mop brush? Or if you're brave, you've gone out and you've shaved your roadkill badger. <laughs> yeah, don't, I, I, I suppose that's a good way to get for your badger hair brushes. 
but these actually do make uh, human hair really does uh, makes a pretty good mop brush but it makes a very good detail brush because uh, like I said when I was a, when I was a kid I could not afford brushes and I would literally snip my own hair and tape it to a stick I wasn't this fancy and uh, yeah <laughs> And that's that's how I did it. Oops, I need to unplug you quickly. Yes. Do not forget to unplug your tools. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead and start with this. And the first thing is to do some sanding on it, light sanding. And I realized I've taken everything but sand my sandpaper up. There it is. Okay. I bought these blocks of sandpaper. This is a one, 120. I bought them at some, probably at, um, what's that called? A cheap tool store that smells funny. And they work really good. They get into your corners and I'm just basically, actually this one isn't too bad um, as far as, um, finishing is. It looks like they've actually burned the, um, burned or somehow sealed the, the edges, so not bad. And this is by Creatology. Okay, so now, um, one, two, three. Uh, this probably has more instructions online. I don't, I have no idea. But uh, it's a bug hotel. And let's see. Now, Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to mix some Mod Podge and water and give this a seal because uh, the paint's going to run like crazy. And some Mod Podge. This is the oldest Mod Podge on earth. It's still good. I probably should replace my Mod Podge or at least get new. Because I think it's about like 10 years old. <laughs> I watch all these other crafters. They use Mod Podge like crazy. And I'm like, wow. Uh, you know, a lot of, you know, when I was really into crafting, a lot of people looked down on things like Mod Podge. It was just like, you know, so cheap. I was like, well, what's wrong with cheap? We all can't can't afford sable and sable brushes and uh, all the other fancy things. But you get what you you do what you can. So. Okay, let's get this. Ooh. Down and there. That's the nice thing about these kits is they're so forgiving. You know if you. It doesn't matter if you're super good or not. It's it's just a fun little thing, and you're gonna have a good time doing it. But you put a little little effort into it and take off the random hairs. That's my fault. <laughs> Wait a minute. Come out of there. Ugh. If I can't fix it, I got scissors for it. <laughs> yeah, let's get this. 
Oh. I'll try to get inside here, but... Well, you're not really going to be painting inside, I guess, so... Just get this painted. And... There we go. And one more side. Oops. I can't tell if that's my fan doing weird things or my chickens complaining. Could be both. That's another nice thing is once it's diluted, it dries very quickly. Okay. Boosh. Right there. To sit here and... Uh, you know, I don't actually have a blow dryer, and that's a problem. <laughs> and this is my fancy palette. 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 One of the other problems with these tiny little insulting brushes is they don't cover very much. And you want a big brush. And this one has glue on it and I don't have my cleaner so I will get another brush. I just go down to Michael's and I buy their cheap brushes. And there we go. Now, I would suggest if you're like me and you're in denial of how well you stay in the lines of using your masking tape, masking, to help you stay within the lines. But, um, in this case, the roof is just these leafy things. So, no worry. Just uh, make nice long strokes. So, needs to be green. Okay. And we've got these little leaf, leaves up here, but I'm using the big brush, so let's see. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, I'll use a different color. Why not? I've got a dozen of them here. So. Let that sit. And is this yellow or green? <laughs> it's chartreuse. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, these things were so hard to pop off, and the, the paint would go everywhere. And um, then you'd have to sit there and try to clean this out of the shag carpeting, because we all had shag carpeting. <laughs> Let me see, any nice mother brush. And let's see how good my hand eye coordination is today. That's not the point. The point is having fun while you're doing it. <laughs> this is definitely fun. It's a little weird, but it's fun. Okay. Uh, 
but like the lady says, just give it a go. You might be good at it. You might not be good at it, but you'll have a good time, so why not? Chicken dude. This is not a thing where you're trying to get rid of. It reminds me, it's like it's a roach hotel. It's not a roach hotel. It's not to get rid of your bugs. It's to help your garden bugs. It's to give them a nice place to live. A happy little home. I, I, I don't know how they know that they're supposed to live here, but that's not the point, is it? <laughs> the point is, is you've given them a nice little home. And how did this even happen? Okay. There's loose hairs, which is loose hairs, which is probably my fault. Oh. Yep. Oh, that, yeah, I need to do that. Alright, so we'll go up to the ant, but not quite over the ant. And I don't know about you, but the ants around here, they don't need any more houses. They pretty much have taken over most of the neighborhood. Well, I guess I'm going to paint over the ant. I painted over the ant. Okay, so let's dry a bit. Since the top is dry, I'll do the... Uh, my little boop 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 I have hot dogs when we're ready when I am ready because while I have been doing this my husband has been barbecuing hot dogs in fact so in a few minutes I will be turning this off and going and eating, letting this dry, and then I will come back and do more little painty dudes, do more painting. Also, I'll probably clean my brush as well. It's off, so be right back. And we're back. Yay. Okay. <sighs> In the meantime, I clean my brushes, let things dry, fed my fish. I had hot dogs, they were good. All right. I don't know about you, but I like a lot of color. Yeah. When I was a kid, my mother asked me, what color do I want my bedroom painted? Because they were re redoing the house. And I said, I wanted it to be yellow. <laughs> and I don't know why, because my favorite color was not yellow. But I wanted it to be yellow. You know, this is a bedroom that faces the uh, the east, fortunately. I, and thankfully, my mother was smarter than me. <laughs> she said, that's an awful lot of yellow. Why don't we trim it in green? And uh, so it'd be like, you have the sunshine and the grass. I like guess how she caught, you know, she, she talked me into it. And I'm like, ooh, okay, that sounds pretty. <laughs> Thank God she did. <laughs> I couldn't imagine that room. It was a...
out of something that would make this so much easier is to give it a big wash and some color to begin beforehand and then paint on top of it. I've got a lot of these kits. I'll try that next time. It should be interesting. It might look really good. It might be a failure. But these these key kits cost a buck or two. Less than that on sale if they're seasonal. I'm pretty sure everything is seasonal at, at, at art stores anyway. to have a boys club but they would let the girls in on Thursdays and then they, they did that for a while and then they finally says you know <laughs> these kids live around here and they don't have anything to do so they just started letting everybody all the kids in all, all day and they had this big craft room and you would sit there and they would give you these plaster things to paint and uh, I used to love doing that but I was so bad at it I'd sit there and paint over I guess I still am I just sort of paint over and paint over and paint over until I got it where I wanted it because it's like oh I got a little bit of pink where it's supposed to be brown so I'll just paint some brown over that oh I got the brown over where it's supposed to be pink so I'll paint a little brown over it. <laughs> by the time I finished it was like I'm painting a lump <laughs> and it would have no distinguishable characteristics and, you know, my mom would all well that's a very nice bunny and I'm like no mom it's an angel. Of course it is. The boys club just had all these fascinating crafts. And some of them I still kind of wonder, I, I, I haven't really seen since. They would take um, pieces of lucite and they would sandwich the two pieces of lucite together with a kind of dye in between them and you'd make all kinds of patterns and uh, like tie-dye patterns between these two pieces of lucite. And then you would, uh, once they were dry, you would cut them into shapes and then you would um, grind and file them down until they were like, an, until they were clear. And then you would make um, usually key fobs out of them, keychain fobs out of them. And I have never seen anyone or heard of anyone doing that since. It was the, it was really cool. I mean, I learned how to um, polish, uh, cut and polish stones, and most importantly, I got really good at grinding, which was good when I was working at my dad's bike shop because I did a lot of grinding there. <laughs>
this one, this is done. I'll be putting it out in the garden. But I am tired right now, so I'm starting to get sloppy, so I'm going to turn this off and come back to it later. bug. <laughs> I can carry my luggage myself. Okay. I think what you're supposed to do is put leaves in here because there's like one, two, three. Um, I guess you're supposed to put like leaves in here so the ladybugs can come in. And then these are for... Uh, the thing is, is I think these are for uh, carpenter bees. But they don't just, want, this is just open holes. What they like is uh, twigs, hollow twigs, uh, reeds uh, that they can burrow into and then lay their eggs. And I mean, here, you know, like this. And that's what they like. And okay, I guess that's now part of. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it's part of that, it's that, yeah, it's, that's that, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. All right, are you dry? Almost dry. I have a bad feeling that if I use this too wet, that paint's going to run. So probably I'm going to wait until tomorrow when this is dried hard and then I'm going to use my ancient Mod Podge from the dawn of time to cover it full strength. It's not going in the Louvre. Huh? It's not going in the Louvre. It's not even going in the San Bernardino um, Museum of Natural History. But hey, <laughs> it is going in my garden. <laughs> uh, and sure why I'm doing this because Mod Podge is water soluble and every now and then um, water falls from the sky around here. I'm told it's called rain. But uh, <laughs> eh, what the heck. So I 
This will smell bad to the poor bugs for a few days. So I'll leave it in here to degas for a while before putting it out and hoping that the ladybugs find it to their liking because I don't like aphids. They eat my roses. They eat everything. They're horrible. They're worse than the... No, they're not worse than gophers. Gophers are definitely the devil. But, uh, aphids are pretty bad. And you will not find me making a gopher house unless you can promise me that the gopher house will make the gophers stop eating everything in my yard. And actually, sometimes I feel really bad for the gophers because I have chickens. Do you know what chickens like to eat? Gophers. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Um, when I had the hens that I keep now are very tiny, but when I was keeping full-size chickens, they would stomp around the ground and they would listen. And if they heard burrows underneath the ground, they would dig it, dig out the gopher babies and eat them. And it was the most horrible thing. But at the same time, I'm like, oh good, no, <laughs> those won't be there to eat. Oh, that's disgusting. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted on the whole gopher thing. <laughs> I have to tell you my gopher story, some of my gopher stories as we go along. But here is our um, bug hotel. Da -da, da -da -da. Yep. Um, it's going to dry for a few days and then it's going to go out and hopefully find some bug friends. Whereas next time, next, I guess in the next two weeks, we'll be doing this kit. <laughs> Premium Series Wood Model Kit, $4.99. I don't know where I got this. I don't know why I got this. I have two of them. As you can see, they're Lincoln Logs. <laughs> This is going to be fun, but uh, yeah, we're going to make a little link, and, and I should probably make a little diorama setting to go with it. Why not, right? Well, um, I'm, I'm Deanne. This is my bench, <laughs> such as it is. Uh, hit the subscribe and like button like all the cool kids. Um, I'll be back, and um, I'll have cleaned up my map better by then, I promise. And... Um, have a great day. Bye.